Did you miss your deadline to renew your Medicaid coverage? You can still send your completed annual review form to Healthy Connections Medicaid. You may be assigned to another health plan, but you can ask to come back to First Choice within 60 days of renewed Medicaid eligibility. It's your family. It's your choice. First Choice is the right choice. Renew and choose us. Visit selecthealthofsc.com slash renew to learn more. Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered Jumbacasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby, mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa, take it easy, Judy. <laughs> The Chumba Life is for everybody. So go to ChumbaCasino.com and play over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. Voidware prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. paranormal peeps and welcome back to another deep woods paranormal podcast my name is matt harvey i am the host of the deep woods paranormal podcast i am also the founder and lead investigator of deep woods paranormal along with my wife amanda and other people we go out and research everything paranormal bigfoot ut ufos ghosts uh demons haunted homes um haunted places if you will river monster lakes monsters strange lights we, we basically investigate everything paranormal. So, real quick before I start, uh, I just need to go back over this. I don't know if you can see this. And it's blocking it out. Okay, so that says Manscaped. And it says uh, Crop Preserver. And what that is, is basically deodorant for down there. For probably, you know, it's supposed to be for guys, but I'm sure women can use it as well. Um, I just wanted to do a quick review on it. Uh, make sure you guys can see it. <laughs> it's not easy to see. So it says Manscaped. Bear with the, the whole in and out thing. So it says Crop Preserver. Uh, and it's about a four ounce fluid, four fluid ounce bottle. Um, it smells really nice. Yeah, has a good smell. Uh, it's very soft and creamy. And essentially uh, has worked really well for me down there. I've uh, I basically used it for a couple of weeks and uh, I really like it. So if you're interested in getting some of this uh, Manscaped Crop Preserver, go down below in the description, whether you're on the audio podcast or on the video podcast, um, it's the links down below for Manscaped and put it in DWP. It'll get you a discount. So, all right. Let's get into some Bigfoot news. All right. So what we're going to do kind of what we did last week. Um, I guess uh, YouTube doesn't like anything that has to do with Animal Planet uh, because it got blocked. So I don't know if, if any of you guys were watching the podcast on the YouTube channel. Um, unfortunately, in some countries it says it's blocked. I, I'm not monetizing these videos anyways right now. So I don't really care about that. I just want to have you guys enjoy our podcast and can continue to like and subscribe, hit that notification bell, uh, and give us a thumbs up. That's really important. Please, please, please give us a thumbs up for the videos. Um, it just helps us get our videos watched in more and more. Uh, the Bigfoot Only podcast seems to be everyone's favorite. So unfortunately, we're going to sacrifice the Anything Goes Paranormal uh, podcast this week. Uh, we're going to do the Bigfoot podcast today, and then we'll do the cryptid only tomorrow. So let's get into this. I'm going to share my screen with you. Can't remember where I left it on. Okay, I left it on that. Okay. I'm going to go back just a few spots here. All right. So this is our website. This is the Deep Woods Paranormal website. Um, essentially, you can come on here, and basically you can see uh, we have home, Deep Woods Productions, podcast, YouTube, Public Ghost Hunts, our team, and social media page. This actually should, should say public events page. Um, we're working with a lot of different people 
on setting up events. I'm hoping to get that set up uh, starting in March. And uh, we'll be having ghost hunts, Bigfoot expeditions. Uh, we'll be having um, like events with other teams and other other uh, production companies. Um, and then we're going to be, you know, basically doing other things like that. So we're also helping out on a movie, which is going to be really cool. I'm excited for that. And uh, I can't talk about it because I signed a non-disclosure agreement. But anyways, so if you're looking for our podcast page, it's basically here on the deepwoodsparanormal.com backslash podcasts. You don't have to worry about remembering that. If you want to watch the video or just listen to the audio and you don't want to try and find it on one of the 60 or 70 or 80 podcast locations we're on, uh, you can just come straight here. The link is down below. And uh, I think this is episode 120 now. So there's about 120 episodes on here. Uh, I mean, basically, you can pick pick your poison um, and see which one you want to listen to. If you like the Bigfoot only podcast, it's on here. Um, I think we just started doing this, but you can just keep going down and down and down and, and you can see more and more and more podcasts. So anyways, if you're if you want to watch our YouTube videos, you can come over here to YouTube. If you're watching this, if you're listening to this, again, all the links are down below for this. So you guys can see this. So this is our last podcast, the Paranormal Podcast, uh, Paranormal News Only. And then uh, basically just, a, you know, we have a ton of videos in our YouTube playlist. So if you haven't been to our YouTube channel, uh, please go check it out. Links down below. You don't have to remember what it is. Just go to the link below. Click on that link. And please like, let me try that again. Please like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell and give us a thumbs up. Uh, again, that really helps us. What also helps us is when people donate to our, our, our channel. Uh, essentially, uh, whether you're on an audio podcast or a video podcast, uh, you can go down below. Again, there's a link that you can buy us a coffee. I've gone over this a million times, but essentially you can basically just buy one, three, five, whatever. Um, someone just bought us five coffees the other day. It's about three dollars, and uh, it's a three dollar donation per coffee. And essentially, what well, our goal is to get to two thousand dollars. The reason I'm trying to get two thousand dollars is there's a camera that I really want that will upgrade our video quality and our audio quality on our on our video, um, so that when we're out looking for Bigfoots or we're doing anything else paranormal wise, um, you guys will get the best video possible. Uh, we have a really good video camera now, but it's it's just kind of starting to get outdated, and uh, we have to climb up to that next level camera uh, if we want to continue to shoot better and better videos. So, anyways, you guys can, uh, if you guys have questions about that or anything, all my information is down below. Uh, my email, my personal cell number is there. You can call, text me, whatever. You can email me. Uh, if you'd like to be on the show you had a Bigfoot experience or Bigfoot sighting or something else, uh, a, share, a story to share. Uh, we'd love to hear it. Uh, again, there's no judgments on this channel. We'd love to hear your story. Uh, if you don't want to be known, we can make you unknown. Um, we can, you know, not say your name or anything like that. And you can tell your story. Uh, I know a lot of people out here, unfortunately, in the Texas area and probably other places too are a little bit, or not a little bit, they're very tentative to come out and tell their Bigfoot stories because they're afraid they're going to get uh, teased or whatever. Bear with me, my allergies have been going nuts the last three days. So um, we don't want that. We don't want people to not to feel like they can't start share their Bigfoot stories, especially out here in Texas. I've met so many people and that have Bigfoot stories, but they won't share them publicly. Um, they're afraid they're going to get ridiculed and their stories are amazing guys. And I try and get them to come on the podcast and they just don't want to because they're afraid somebody's going to hear their voice or whatever. And, and, and you know, give them a whole bunch of baloney, but uh, I'll tell you what, if, if you're on this channel, listening to this podcast, you know, you're probably a paranormal supporter of some sort. So anyways, um, let's get into some Bigfoot, um, I would call it, it's kind of evidence. It's it's just different things that I haven't kind of showed you guys before. We haven't really talked a lot about DNA. Now, you know, you guys, have. I'll show you in a second. You, you guys have all seen the hair samples. And uh, oh, let me grab this too. And then we've got a tooth. And I'll show that in, in just a minute. I don't want to take it out of its bag because I don't want to touch it. 
All right. So this lady, she studies Bigfoot uh, DNA. And this is her story. She says that Bigfoot's, uh, as you can see on here, let me blow this up. So it says, study, Bigfoot is part human. Uh, it says, DNA may pro provide link. So let's listen to her story real quick. I think this is going to be loud enough for you guys to hear. With a scientific background of vet who says Bigfoot is real and actually related to us humans. Well, I was a skeptic. I did not believe these things existed at all prior to this study. She's talking analysis of Sasquatch fur. After a five-year study, more than 100 DNA samples, Dr. Melba Ketchum believes the species developed 15,000 years ago, a hybrid cross between Homo sapiens and an unknown primate. Nobody has ever found another type of people that are living contemporary to us. I mean, they live right under our noses. And we don't we're able to get proof of this until now. Listen, there have been innumerable sightings. Some Sasquatch hunters have even deigned to speak to Conan O'Brien. See, I know they exist. You know he exists. And they, they exist. There's more than one Bigfoot. They're a species. They're like a primate. Really? Really? He even has his own animal planet series. These are not just animals. These are a type of people. They don't want to be seen. They don't want to be found. Okay, maybe it's too weird, but even the possibility, oh my goodness, I want to believe. Can you imagine if Bigfoot is actually real? For Good Morning America, Nick Watt, ABC News. Okay, so I'm not going to replay that, but um, that's pretty interesting. She has the, you know, the cojones to come out and say, hey guys, I've got DNA and I can prove that B Bigfoot's um, part human. And I mean, I don't know how many times I've heard people say they've sent DNA and, and it always comes back as they call it contaminated because it has human DNA in it. Uh, and then some other unknown sample. And so this is very interesting. I'd like to get a DNA expert on here with me one of these days to talk about DNA just by itself. If you guys are interested in that, uh, leave me a comment down below saying, yes, I'd love to hear about the DNA, or if that's just boring as hell, then, then let me know that as well. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, if you're interested in watching this video, all the videos I'm showing you right now, they're off all off YouTube. I will put the links down in the description, both the audio and the video. So you guys can go back and watch and listen to this if you want to. Um, there are short clips. This is only about, this is under two minutes. All right, so let me make this smaller again. So that's interesting. And we'll talk about DNA at the end here. I don't want to get into too much because I'll have to go back to my normal screen and not show you these YouTube videos. So let's move on to the next one. So it says Bigfoot salvage snarl caught on camera. The proof is out there. Now, I've heard a lot of screams and howls and stuff like that. And we've recorded stuff, too. Uh, if you go back to Joe's camp or a few other videos that we have, unfortunately, a lot of my videos from Black Star Canyon and stuff like that, when that account got destroyed, um, and I'm not going to get into that story, that UFO story. You can go back and listen or watch um, on, a, on another podcast. But yeah, so um, I've heard these screams. I've heard them. I've heard the what they call the how how. I've heard all of them, and they're creepy as hell, to be honest with you. Um, for something to be able to sit there and scream for five minutes straight, I don't know any human or animal that can do that. So whatever is making these screams or howls, and that, it just echoes through the whole area. Um, essentially, it's got to be something that we don't know about or that, you know, isn't being told to us, if you will. Um, when we were at Joe's, we caught that five minute, whatever it was, um, that scream. And, man, there was gunshots going off as it was going on and stuff like that. So, all right, let's listen to this gentleman's um, video here. Let me see if I can, I don't know if I can make this bigger. A local border columnist is recording himself during a routine mushroom hunt in the woods of northern Illinois. The man is startled by a strange and scary sound seemingly coming from nearby. It's a so that's a pretty damn long scream. Now, could somebody be out in the forest doing that? Yes. This gentleman was, wasn't out here looking for Bigfoot. 
he was out here looking for mushrooms and other things. He's uh, basically just, you know, filming a documentary, basically, possibly uh, for YouTube or whatever on uh, on mushrooms. And that's awesome. And wild edibles, probably. Um, so for him to catch that on his camera is, is pretty cool. And he looks like if you watch the way the video kind of he just kind of turns to start to look for this thing, this scream. Um, this is pretty interesting. This is pretty telling uh, that he actually is not like in on the prank or if if it is a hoax. He was not in on the hoax. He didn't know that that was going to happen. Essentially, he he just reacts by, you know, you, you see the camera kind of shake when it first moves. And then you kind of see him panning around to try and find out where that just came from so he's in the middle of the woods um it's very thick where he is i can tell um so this this call sounds like it's a little ways away it's not like right next to him drawn out howl that lasts about nine seconds and certainly sounds like an animal of some kind the mushroom hunter pans his camera back and forth to see if he can spot anything but sees nothing i think it's so he basically says, I think it's time to go at the end there. Um, so my thoughts, I'm just watching, you know, everywhere he's kind of panning. And when I'm watching this video, I don't see any like normal signs of Bigfoot territory. Let's put it that way. Not. Did you miss your deadline to renew your Medicaid coverage? You can still send your completed annual review form to Healthy Connections Medicaid. You may be assigned to another health plan but you can ask to come back to First Choice within 60 days of renewed Medicaid eligibility. It's your family. It's your choice. First Choice is the right choice. Renew and choose us. Visit selecthealthofsc.com slash renew to learn more. Okay, round two. Name something that's not boring. A laundry? Ooh, a book club. Computer solitaire, huh? Ah. Oh. Sorry, we were looking for Chumba Casino. That's right. Chumbacasino.com has over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. Forward, we're prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Hey, guys. It is Ryan. I'm not sure if you know this about me, but I'm a bit of a fun fanatic when I can. I like to work, but I like fun, too. It's a thing. And now the truth is out there. I can tell you about my favorite place to have fun. Chumba Casino. They have hundreds of social casino style games to choose from with new games released each week. You can play for free anytime, anywhere, and each day brings a new chance to collect daily bonuses. So join me in the fun. Sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. VTW. Void. We're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus. Bigfoot's kind of establish an area and basically they will defend that area. Um, people have had rocks thrown at them. They've had screams and howls. They've been chased out of areas. Um, usually when that happens, there's all kinds of different structures like teepees or um, tree trunks are basically leaned against other tree trunks. Or sometimes there's tree trunks crossed across in, in multiple ways, almost like an asterisk. Um, and then sometimes there's trees that are bent over, like looped over. And a lot of the times they're either pushed into the ground or they're, you know, clipped on and not clipped onto, kind of snagged onto another plant. Um, so that they stay bent and i've seen if you're watching this video i've seen the tree this size bent literally over and uh pinned to the ground and the, and the branches were all still green and fresh and the, the tree was actually still alive so i don't know why they do this the only thing i can say is it's probably some kind of a sign of um this is my territory or territorial or the, the bigger the tree branch or, or trunk that is bent over, uh, maybe the bigger the Bigfoot. I don't know. Um, you know, it basically could just be saying, stay out of my area. This is my territory. One of these days I want to do, uh, I'll watch some videos on gorilla activity because I've seen gorillas in the in the uh, zoos. And a lot of the time I saw orangutan basically walking on all fours and then basically sitting up and then going down on, you know, basically on his tummy. And I'm like, holy crap, I've seen that before. And uh, so anyways, yeah, I mean, this is pretty cool. I mean, could this be faked? Yeah, it could be. 
Uh, but for this guy to not to be completely taken by surprise um, with this, I'm going to give him a thumbs up here, uh, is, is pretty telling. Uh, and the fact that he goes, okay, it's time to go. <laughs> that pretty much tells you, unless there are some Bigfoot hunters in the area, uh, I don't know where this was. Um, I'll have to do some more research on this. I'll have to. Scott, look. Oops. May 2015. Um, he's got. We lost it. Let May 2015. Out. Sorry about that. Let me go back in. May. Okay. So this is the same video. Anyways, I'll have to do more research on this. I was trying to find more details on it. Let me see what happens when I click this description. Here we go. See, while hunting them for mushrooms, a local hunter is spooked by what we believe to be Bigfoot growling in the clip. Uh, in the clip from the proof is out there. Um, okay, so it doesn't basically. Yeah, it doesn't say where he was. So that's that's kind of interesting. Um, I wish they would have basically said he was in this forest at this time of the of the year. And there, I wish there was more information. To share with you guys but anyways so that's interesting um if you're like i said if you're watching this you can see it if you if you're on the audio podcast like i said i will link this down below don't worry you guys can come find this and watch it for yourselves something i always tell people i don't expect anyone to believe until they've had an encounter where they can say it couldn't be anything else but in this scenario or watching somebody else's video um i'm not trying to debunk this i'm not trying to say it's real or fake i'm just showing it to you for you guys to enjoy and you guys can make up your own minds okay so i just want to make that disclaimer and you know, make sure that disclaimer is out there um you know like i said you got to make up your own mind is this real is a fake did somebody you know off camera somewhere across the way make that scream yeah possibly uh, but judging by his reaction he was not in on it all right so let's go to the next one this one's one of my favorites. Uh, in fact, the Finding Bigfoot crew actually went out to look for this and uh, did some research out here. And this is behind another famous hotel. So um, this is pretty interesting. It says another Bigfoot sighting report near uh, Provo, Utah. And um, this is basically on the live news. And they're basically talking about it. It made the, the news. What it is is there's a hill up here. Um, some some mountains and then they kind of slope down and slope down again and then essentially there's something big and dark standing on uh, about halfway up on the picture um, and they don't know what it is so let's listen to them talk about this Lee, look how big it is i don't think it is a human i think it's a sasquatch it was a bluebird january morning here in the foothills of northeast provo when a group of guys saw a figure on the mountain that looked like something they've never seen before you can't just see something that's maybe a once in a century discovery and go do your nine to five job you got to go look for fur or footprints or some kind of evidence and the camera was rolling as austin took to the mountain with a buddy on a search for the elusive bigfoot so I'm seeing something that is not deer tracks anymore. We're trying to determine what it what, what it is. Their findings were inconclusive. Was it a bear? Maybe. That's plausible. Was it a person? Also plausible. Was it something else? I think that's also plausible. Who knows? On the other hand, I spoke to a curator from the Natural History Museum of Utah who says not only is that figure in the video not Sasquatch, but it's safe to say that Sasquatch is not something that would even exist. What's the likelihood that there are big animals that have gone undetected by scientists and by trained observers? Okay, so what they're doing is they're throwing in, they're, they're showing you the believers and they're showing you the non-believers. There are scientists out there that will not, absolutely not, um, admit that Bigfoots are real. It uh, doesn't matter how much proof you bring to them. They're going to say it's this, it's that, it's it's just fake, you know, and, and that's the sad part about it. And there's other other scientists out there, a very small amount that will, you know, either say, yes, the DNA shoes shows that they're real. The footprints, uh, um, you know, show that it's real. There is something out there. Um, can't say what it is for sure, but there's they're, they're open to the idea of it. And uh, but the scientific community 
in general is very, it doesn't matter what it is. It's very close minded to anything paranormal. Um, so they're showing some other videos of Bigfoots. Um, that last one was kind of interesting, but uh, essentially that guy, I, I'm glad that he went all the way up the hill to in the first video to look for that and see if he can find any prints. What's interesting also, he found deer prints. So Bigfoots supposedly eat deer. They're, they're, they eat they eat other things too, but they supposedly eat deer. So maybe the Bigfoot was actually chasing the deer, maybe came up on that clearing to look down and see if he could see the deer. And then as you watch it, he, the, the creature looks like it kind of turns and starts to walk up at a vertical angle. And then it turns back and walks at another vertical angle. Doesn't walk like a human. Um, now, could that be somebody in a suit? I mean, if, yeah, there was about an eight or 10, eight to nine to 10 foot person up there in that freezing cold uh, with a suit on and able to walk up the side of a mountain. Sure. But remember, I talked to you guys about this last time. Walking up the side of a mountain is extremely hard. Us humans, we basically have to almost do it on all fours. These guys, uh, these creatures just easily walk up the side of a hill, even if it's almost vertical, almost straight up and down. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's interesting. You know, I, I, I appreciate the skeptical side, uh, but to say they don't exist when there's so much evidence of them, and there's a lot of evidence out there, guys. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of it we don't see. Um, about Probably about 70 to 80% of it is not shown publicly, and uh, that's sad. So anyways, let's watch the end of this, and we'll move on to the next one. Eric Rickhart has spent much of his career exploring places people have never gone before in search of new species. So far, no Bigfoot or anything like it. There are. So in this video, basically there another person, it's another person's video. You can see something very dark and, and hairy um, walking on two legs up, again, in a zigzag pattern up the hill. Uh, it's not like they're walking like straight up like a human would do to try and you know, just get up the hill. They're walking back and forth like they're almost on a pair of stairs that, that go back and forth. Of undiscovered things, particularly in the natural world. But they don't take the form of giant apes running around in largely settled areas of the world. So what do you believe? I'm really hoping I get to go look again. Maybe there's something out there to find right here in Utah, even in Provo. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah, they, that gentleman basically didn't care anything about the video. He just wanted to disprove it and move on. You know, he just, there's no Bigfoots. There's there's no way they can be out there, you know, and that's that's honestly pretty close-minded. Um, you know, I mean, they, they, they said there's a, a lot of the time they say, that, you know, a lot of these animals that are extinct, you know, that we find, oh, well, that wasn't possible. And then all of a sudden you find this fish that's, supposedly been dead for a hundred million years appears and they're finding species like that all the time. So to say that these things aren't out there again, I, you know, I'm, I'm not, if you're a skeptic, that's awesome. Be skeptical. I, you know, I don't expect you to believe until you've had an encounter where you could say that could be anything else but a Bigfoot. But the problem with that is you also have to go out into these locations that are, you know, they're not fun to go into sometimes, they're very hard to get through. Um, a lot of the time, they're extremely overgrown. Uh, they're places humans don't go, and that's why these things are out there. But people sit on their on their couch or you know in front of their computer or on their phone, and they just you know they don't do any research on their own. But they just oh no, they don't exist. I mean that's again that's pretty close minded. You know if if you haven't actually tried to go out and look for yourself then you have no, you can't really say they don't exist. You can say that, you know, that, that basically there's a probability that they don't exist. But in, if you haven't gone out and had your own encounter or tried to have your own encounter, uh, you got to get up off the couch or wherever from your desk and go out into the woods. You know, go out with a group that knows that's researching Bigfoots. Maybe you'll have an encounter. Maybe it'll change your mind. Uh, but anyways, like I said, I, I want you guys to remain skeptical. Uh, all the way until the point that you have that encounter. I really don't want you guys to believe 100% that they're real until you've had your own encounter. Um, but again, you got to get out and do that. 
Uh, if you're here in Texas, in Central or East Texas, we'll, we'll be doing Bigfoot exhibitions in places where we've had encounters before. That That's coming uh, and probably in the next couple, three or four months. Um, and then we're going to be working on some other projects um, for that too. So I know everybody loves Bigfoot. This is like our most popular thing. Anything Bigfoot is a, like the most popular thing on our channel. So, um, you know, again, I'm just trying to complete the rest of my camping gear. I'm only, I'm waiting, we're waiting, Amanda and I are waiting for the end of hunting season, and then Amanda's, you know, has got, got something going, so I got to make sure she's okay um, after that, but she's going to have a surgery that's going to change her life, so uh, we're looking forward to that, and then, I, like I said, I just got to make sure she's okay and settled, uh, and I got to make sure that's all taken care of before I continue on with leaving her for a weekend and stuff like that. So I'm going to be contacting several people that have contacted me recently. If you're in central or East Texas, or even in West Texas, and you don't mind driving out here to East Texas into central or East Texas, um, or you have a location that you have a Bigfoot location that you want me to come check out. Um, let me know. Uh, I'm going to be working with a lot of different people from different backgrounds. Some are hunters, some are just Bigfoot researchers. Some are people that want to have an experience. Uh, they've never had an experience. And I don't mind going out with skeptics either uh, because it teaches me. I learn from skeptics, you know, and sometimes, you know, going out with, I love to go out with hunters too because they're so knowledgeable of everything in the forest. And when they say, hey, that's not normal. That shouldn't be like that. Or this footprint, I don't, I've never seen a footprint like this, these giant footprints, or even if they're smaller. Um, and for them to say, oh, uh, I don't know what that is or why that's there or who the hell's walking around barefoot out here. Um, uh, but that doesn't look like a normal print. You know, that's, that's the kind of stuff I love. Um, so always fun when a skeptic goes, becomes a believer because we've had some kind of crazy encounter, but anyways, all right. So, um, like I said, if you're interested in going on a Bigfoot expedition, that's coming up probably March or April, uh, depending on the weather, I just want to make sure all the cold weather is kind of out of here. Bigfoots are not really active till right before summer, and they're really active as you go all the way through November and December, because I believe that's when they are breeding. Uh, anyways, so let's move on to the next video. Um, this is uh, Cliff from uh, Animal Planet's Finding Bigfoot. Uh, I have heard rumors that they're starting the Finding Bigfoot show over. Uh, again, um, which would be awesome if they do, uh, really enjoyed meeting Matt and Bobo. So I'm hoping they're going to start back up. I've never had the pleasure of meeting Cliff or Renee, uh, really like to meet Cliff one of these days. Um, cause he's just so knowledgeable about footprints and I would love to take him out to certain places where they found prints, but have not been able to cast any castings, uh, and get his take on what it is because he's seen so many footprints in his days. He just knows. Um, that's the cool part about being out in the field so much is that he, he knows he's been researching these things for a long time. So let's listen to them real quick. Did you miss your deadline to renew your Medicaid coverage? You can still send your completed annual review form to Healthy Connections Medicaid. You may be assigned to another health plan, but you can ask to come back to first choice within 60 days of renewed Medicaid eligibility. It's your family. It's your choice. First choice is the right choice. Renew and choose us. Visit selecthealthofsc.com slash renew to learn more. Hey guys, it is Ryan. I'm not sure if you know this about me, but I'm a bit of a fun fanatic when I can. I like to work, but I like fun too. It's a thing. And now the truth is out there. I can tell you about my favorite place to have fun. Chumba Casino. They have hundreds of social casino style games to choose from with new games released each week. You can play for free anytime, anywhere and each day brings a new chance to collect daily bonuses. So join me in the fun. Sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. VTW. Void. We're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus. What, ha what happened? Well, unfortunately, it's not a new series. Oh. Actually, we just filmed our final. Uh, we just showed our final episode. But we were on the air for almost 10 years. I mean, eight, eight and a half years of yeah. searching for Sasquatches across 46 different states and five continents. And have we found Sasquatches before? Yes, we have. Well, we found one in Portland yesterday. We'll have to show you that in just a couple minutes. But th is this evidence that you've brought? Okay. So if you're listening to the podcast, um, he's just talking about the finding of Bigfoot in 
saying that, yes, they did get evidence of Bigfoot. Um, when he's got in front of him, it's a bunch of different casts. Looks like some are actually handprints, which is awesome. I would love to get a handprint. In fact, I've got a whole uh, fingerprint collection um, kit, including the dust and stuff like that, that black dust you see on, on like CSI. Uh, and then I've got the little piece of tape that you put the fingerprint on and you closed it. Uh, I would like to get some kind of proof of that one of these days too. But he's going to be talking about handprints and footprints, and this is very interesting to me. I Hopefully it's interesting to you. So let's hear him talk about this. Yeah, this is actual physical evidence of Sasquatches. Because people out there say, no, there is no evidence for Sasquatch. They're absolutely incorrect or unaware of the evidence, because here's some right here. So again, like he just said, you know, everybody says, oh, where's the big, where's the evidence? Well, and I'll show you guys this in a second. You know, there's hair samples. Where do the hair samples go? There's, I got to go through and pull those hair samples out of those twigs with a um, pair of tweezers and some clothes on and a mask and whatever else and get them put into these little test tubes. And then we'll send these out to somewhere to get some DNA um, in the future. But uh, I'm just lagging on that. I've been really far behind on a lot of stuff. Uh, in there last year, just really... Everything happened all at once, and we were just running around like idiots with our heads cut off and uh, trying to get stuff done. And we're still playing catch up, but we're almost there. And then once we get caught up, things will start to kick into gear again for us. Uh, more uh, more investigations. Uh, we're trying to wrap up some other investigations. Uh, a lot of videos still to review and stuff like that. So that's what I'm working on. Anyways, uh, we have some private clients that we're helping. And... Uh, with, with some ghost stuff, and then uh, then we'll get back to the Bigfoot stuff. But anyways, um, footprints are super – I mean, ne never found a handprint, unfortunately. But footprints are, are awesome evidence uh, because they can show, you know, hopefully they're not faked. But you can – you know, a good person like Dr. Jeff Melbourne, uh, you can, he actually takes samples. You can actually – if you get a good casting – uh, plaster casting of a possible footprint you can send it to him and he can analyze it for you and tell you hey yeah this is good or or no i'm sorry somebody hosts you but uh cliff is also very good at that and uh he's got thousands of castings from what he i've heard um basically he he, he makes castings of footprints all the time so let's listen to him talk about that the right places yeah and talk to the right guy you can actually look almost anywhere for them as well as long as there is habitat for them because Sasquatches are a perfectly normal animal living here in North America. They just happen to be very, very elusive. Oh, very big, but somehow very good hider. So are there places people could actually go look if they wanted to go Bigfoot spotting? Right outside of town. The Clackamas River is a great location. Um, I live out by Sandy. There are a number of reports just on the Sandy River outside of Sandy itself. Um, you can go over to Washington, the Gifford Pinchot National Forest. Sasquatches are literally all around us, but in very, very small numbers, which is ironic for such a large creature. Okay, so he's talking about Ohio. I believe he lives in Ohio, but he researches in Ohio. He researches all over the place but mainly in Ohio and in Washington. And I believe Bobo hopefully still goes out with him. I know they have a podcast too. So if you're interested in that, I'll, I'll look and see if I can find the link for that, their podcast. I know I see it every once in a while on Twitter. I try to listen when I can, but I just, I have very little time right now. So you get into Sasquatch searching. <laughs> well, I've always been kind of weird, basically. <laughs> I've always been interested in eccentric topics. And once I, once I, I, I guess I've always had this interest, but when I was in college, I stumbled across a book that was a collection of scholarly journal articles written by anthropologists on the subject. And that's when I went, Ooh, oh my gosh, scientists are actually doing work on Sasquatch evidence. And that's what turned everything. From then, it turned not into, it wasn't a cultural thing any longer. It was a scientific endeavor. And I'm a citizen science scientist, basically. I am doing citizen science out in the woods, gathering evidence, compiling it, and sharing it with academics at uh, institutions. So that's pretty much what we're doing, too. And we're gathering evidence little by little. Um, I need to start working with people over at Texas A&M. I need to uh, spend some time getting to know some of the um different uh, professors over there who, who basically can help me with this. And uh, if you're, if you're listening and I know we have a big following here in college station, Bryan, Texas, 
uh, if you're listening and you're you're a um, you know a Bigfoot person um, and you you know you work at your doctor or a scientist that researches handprints footprints, please contact me. Information is down below in the in the description. I would love to talk to you about some of these sightings we've had and all this other stuff and, and just get your take. Um, I'd love to have you come out to places where we're finding footprints and say, hey, yep, yeah, that's a good one or no, that's not. Or what is that? Or I've never seen anything like that. I would just love to get your reaction to whatever we're finding. And we do find quite a few prints uh, every once in a while. Um, sometimes we get lucky like shows. Oh, my gosh. I think the biggest we found a 24 inch footprint thing was 24 inch this is long um double my foot and it was at least god it had to be like seven or eight maybe 10 inches wide it made my foot like a look like a little kid's foot so this is you know i know people go oh castings are boring footprints are boring we want a video of them or or something of them other than you know footprints but these are footprints handprints they're important because they tell a story. They help tell the story of the possible Bigfoots. So let's listen. So crazy. That's cool. And so, okay. So we talk about Sasquatches. We talk about Bigfoot. Is Bigfoot just like one famous Sasquatch? And Actually, that Sasquatch is, is the type of creature well, that it is? How does... Little history lesson. Uh -huh. The word Sasquatch is an Anglicized term from the Stahelis people up in British Columbia outside of Harrison Hot Springs. A guy named J.W. Burns was a teacher on the reservation and he didn't he couldn't spell the word that they use for Sasquatch so he Anglicized it. That was in the 1920s. The word Bigfoot was born in 1958 when a road building crew in Northern California cast a footprint and brought it to the newspaper and then it, it actually was a slow news day because across the AP news wires, Bigfoot was born. Oh, they're like, hmm, what should we call this big footprint that yeah, we found? But I Yeah, that's super interesting. That was out in California. And uh, you know, the, the Bigfoots or Sasquatch or what however you pronounce the name of them. Uh there's so many different names for them. They call them wood boogers, they call them uh the creature, they call them creatures of different places. I mean, there's too many of them to to go into there's the beast of prayer road that they say there's a dog man or it's a bigfoot or it's a cross between the two um there's so much so many different um names and stuff for them but bigfoots have been around um since before you know basically the english or the, i'm sorry um white people essentially came across and uh, uh basically came in, into the united states into this area um, the indigenous, uh, Indians had many encounters with them and it's very interesting to listen to them talk too. One of these days I'll have to do, uh, some kind of research and find some locals out here. Uh, maybe there's still some local tribes or some reservations where they still have Bigfoot activity. I don't know. Uh, there could be, but anyways, if, if you're a native American and your family or, you or anybody you know who's had an experience uh we'd love to have you on the podcast love to hear your experiences um love to hear the history of your tribe and love to hear you know what you guys call them if you believe in them um and go from there so anyways let's keep listening Ironically enough, if it had walked on its hands, it could have been called big hands because Ooh. these are hand prints from a Sasquatch. Yeah, these two are from, well, you know, they have an overall large anatomy, shall we say. So the Oregon Bigfoot Festival, again, this is the second annual, is happening at Glen. Okay, yeah, we're not going to get into that. All right, because essentially, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. All right. So that's some interesting things about Bigfoot, um, different takes from different people um, that have had experiences, uh, the people that don't believe, which is fine. You know, I don't expect anyone to believe, but uh, DNA is super important. I think even if you can't find a body or even if you do find a body, there's a very high probability that the, uh, you know, men in black or the GOV are going to step in and take that body before you can do anything with it. Um, I've witnessed, I've talked to witnesses that I've seen something possibly shot a Bigfoot and then black helicopters flew over and they couldn't find the body in that area. So 
anyways, that's a, that's a whole other conspiracy theory. So this is the test tube I was talking about. I don't know why that blocks that out. <laughs> right there. Okay. If I have both hands up, I'm good. Okay. As you can, can you kind of see there's a hair follicle inside of this. Um, you can see it kind of floating around. There's a chunk of skin right here that I'm very interested to see if if maybe somebody can get some DNA off of. This this sample here has been out in the woods. I just won't show it. This sample has been out in the woods for quite a while. Um, it had been, it's been out in the woods for like two years, so I don't think there's much to it. Um, these hair samples, I don't want to open this bag too much, but you can kind of see, okay, this camera does not want to show this. So I know it's hard to see, but on the bottom of the bag, there's there's a whole bunch of hairs tangled up in some um, tree branches. So we had to kind of carefully snip the tree branches and pull it off, and then we put it directly in that bag so that we wouldn't mess with the, uh, the DNA. We didn't want to touch anything. We didn't want to breathe on it, contaminate it in any way. And then if I can get this thing to show, there's this. Um, if you haven't seen the other video on this, this is, I don't know if this is a cow tooth. You know, if you're out there in your rancher and you know what a cow's tooth looks like, um, I'm 99% sure this is a cow tooth. Um, but I mean, there's still that slight 1% chance that maybe it's something else. So if you, if you know what this is, bear with me, I'm putting that back on the wall. Um, let me know. I love to send it out, you know, break a little small piece off of it or, or see if I can break into the inside of it and get a little bit of a marrow out of there or tooth, tooth matter. That, that again, was has been sitting out in the, in the wilderness for a very long time. The chances of getting any DNA off it are like slim to none. But anyways, we will try. Um, I'm hoping off these other hair samples will get a... Uh, a better chance of possibly getting something. I'm hoping there's some skin in that as well. And uh, so, all right, guys, well, this is getting a little long. Um, we just want to thank all of our new uh, viewers and listeners. Uh, we are getting a crap ton of you guys, and uh, we're so thankful for you all, uh, for all our listeners and viewers. Thank you guys so much for helping us out. Thanks for buying us a coffee and supporting our channel by hitting that like notification bell. Um, hit the thumbs up and then basically subscribing. And if you'll do us a favor too, if you like these videos, do me a favor, share it on your own personal um, Facebook page or any, any other social media, Twitter, Instagram, wherever, wherever you like to post your stuff. If you would help us out and just, just post uh, this video over there, uh, we'd appreciate it. Uh, or, or the audio clip over there. Uh, because it helps us, again, continue to grow and get our name out there and stuff like that. So, anyways, this is, like I said, this is getting a little long. Uh, we appreciate you guys. Thank you guys so much for all you do for us. And we will catch you on the next one.